This is a Dreamcast disc and is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Dreamcast, up to six billion players. Welcome back to the stage of history. Why don't we play together? Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go! <laughs> Please stop this disc now. Now, 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 now. Well, dear listeners, we are back for another episode of the Dreamcast Junkyard Dream Pod, the absolute creme de la creme of Dreamcast focused audio productions. Uh, something must have gone terribly awry at the Junkyard HQ, though, because you are stuck with me, Loz, in the hosting chair today. So if you enjoy umming, eyeing, and lots of awkward transitions between agenda items, then you are in luck, my friend. Uh, This episode is going to be entirely dedicated to the pleasures of playing the Dreamcast online. For those of you who aren't aware, this isn't only a matter of historical interest. Oh no, right now, in the year 2023, there are about two dozen Dreamcast games with functioning online multiplayer modes, and a magnificent global community of people who are regularly playing them. Uh, It's a particularly exciting period for the Dreamcast Online 2, as more games are likely to be brought back online in the near future, thanks to the work of some very talented people in the Dreamcast scene. And in fact, a brand new Dreamcast game with online multiplayer is due to be released next month. Driving Strikers, a four-player car football game, has recently been made available for pre-order from the Norwich-based Wave Game Studios. Of course, we'll include a link to that in the show notes, along with some directions as to where you should go if you'd like to get your Dreamcast online. And hopefully, if uh, me and the guests do our jobs right today, then we will thoroughly whet your appetites to be playing the Dreamcast online. Uh, There certainly aren't the number of players that you'll find online with the lesser consoles. However, rest assured that that is more than made up for in terms of the quality. All right, uh, that's the public service announcement out of the way. Let's move on to introducing our special, special, special guests Three specials. Um, first up is Harvey Jones, who also goes by the pseudonym Pizza Hotline. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Yeah, you can call me Harvey or Pizza Hotline, whichever. I don't mind. It's easier if you call me Harvey, I guess. Um, I make music under the name Pizza Hotline is why uh, I use that name sometimes. Um, but yeah, I'm just a keen Dreamcast online player, also a keen uh, fan of the Junkyard. And it's my first time here. So thanks for having me. Oh, you're more than welcome. We are delighted to have you on the pod. And I, I think I should mention uh, as well that you are the maestro who produced the remix outro for the pod that we've been using the last few episodes. Um, yeah, that was loads of fun. It's, it's awesome to hear that like whenever, because I used to skip, no offense, but I used to skip the like the, la- the last outro just because it's the same, it was the same as the intro. And I do, I listen to it and have a bit of a you know, a bit of a pat on the back when I listen to that. <laughs> I, I am not ashamed to admit that. Yeah, well, uh, we've got to keep you sweet because we might need to use your skills moving forward, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so great to have uh, Harvey on the pod. Uh, our second guest uh, also needs to be shown due respect as he is the undisputed world champion of Monaco Racing Simulation. That's right, uh, Holston. It's great to have you on the pod. Pretty much retired from Monaco, but yeah, I <laughs> managed to get good at one point. Yeah, only after you took all my records back after I got on the leaderboards, and then you swipe, you wiped the leaderboards with your name, and then retired. I, I had them deleted since. <laughs> you can you can go back. But yeah, I'm just just a random guy from Germany who likes to play Dreamcast online, pretty much. That's good. That's a nice, sweet summary there. Nothing more, nothing less. Brilliant. Um, Okay, well, welcome to the pod, Holston. Um, Oh, uh, yeah, and before I forget, in addition to our special guests, we also have this bloke, James Harvey. 
uh, who some listeners may already be well accustomed to, um, mainly due to Spirit of Speed rants and the like. Uh, how do you, James? I was just waiting for the longest intro to a podcast ever to finish, mate, to be honest, for you to get around to introducing us all. (laughs) Well, you know, it's my first time hosting. I didn't want to cheap out. (laughs) You're doing a good job. You got this. (laughs) <laughs> brilliant brilliant given that evidently james james would like us to to move on i'll take that cue and we'll move on to the next section it's been a bit of a tradition that's been established that we normally ask a fun quirky question um i think it was andrew that first introduced that but i'm actually going to keep a very very tight ship today and we'll be staying laser focused on our topic which is the dreamcast online So what I want to know is, when did you first play the Dreamcast Online and uh, what compelled you to give it a go? What are your memories of that period? And James, we'd like to hear your dulcet tones first, please, on this. Dulcet tones, eh? That might be the first someone's ever... Is it a compliment? Compliment to me that way. Um, I'm afraid my my story is going to be probably similar to most people's first ever online Dreamcast experience. We had a PC uh, in the house, but um, it was by no means a gaming PC back in the day. So never used to game on PC, but always... Um, sort of fascinated by the thought of playing online and then obviously again a dreamcast that was the the one big kind of um uh, thing that was coming that was really exciting and like many people i signed up on dream arena pretty much straight away as soon as it was uh, you were able to from launch and waited patiently for my free copy of choo choo rocket to arrive um a story i've told many times on the pod before Mm -hmm. but yeah that was my first ever online experience was playing uh, Choo Choo Rocket um, till the wee hours of the morning, um, one game after another, which was pretty much the theme until Toy Racer came out, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, as I said, not particularly original because I'm sure many people's first uh, Dreamcast experience online was with Choo Choo. But, um, but yeah, that was me. And I should say as well, it was my first ever online game in general. I'd never played online before um, mm. before that point. So it was it's quite mm. a special nostalgic moment for me in general because from that point onwards really online gaming became you know my my first go-to in any game that i bought sort of beyond that point and obviously xbox live followed quickly after Mm -hmm. and it was quite evidently it was it was quite a long wait then uh because you you got your dreamcast quite soon after release yeah just after launch my birthday's in november um Uh and i had to wait save up my money my birthday money from uh saving up my pocket money rather all the way up through and then my my birthday sort of bonanza just tipped it over the edge so i was about i was about a month out from launch um and yeah it was uh even so it was great to be able to have the internet in my room to be honest because again family pc in the in the office kind of uh, in the family <laughs> office um and you know now all of a sudden i can i can be browsing into the late night um sending emails and going on dreamcast chat rooms and whatever which was yeah which is really good didn't have a keyboard at the time so that was always fun trying to oh, use the, boy. <laughs> the virtual keyboard yeah i did I, I did eventually eventually invest in one but it was kind of uh you know spending 20 quid on a keyboard back then was like well that's that's half of a game that i could be buying instead so so yes i suffered long enough till i got one uh brilliant thanks for that james uh so holston you're up next when did you first get online with the dreamcast and what what compelled you to give it a go well i pretty much got broadband internet very late in like 2006 and then two years later was 18 i finally managed to get a job make money get my own pc and i was able to watch a lot of stuff on the internet (laughs) Mm -hmm. got really into retro gaming and then i started collecting dreamcast and other stuff Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. i found out the dreamcast could still be played online with uh, there were like four games and then i looked into it how to do it the old pc dc version was definitely not something i would have been able to pull off but then i managed to get my hand on a bba after looking for a very long time and i think it took me almost like after i had it it took me almost a year to finally manage to connect to fantasy star online and what what kind of uh, year was this roughly? It was like 2012. Okay, 2012. So it's it's you didn't have a DreamPi at that point, just the BBA. No, no, DreamPi didn't exist. 
Yeah. Back then, there was only you could go online with real dial up, which was not <clears> an option for me. The old PC DC server, which used the Windows 98 computer and <laughs> another 56K modem, which was also not an option. Hardcore. It's very hardcore. And a BBA. And I went out to search for a BBA. I found one after a long time. But then I had to figure out how to configure, how to figure the system to get online to connect to the server when server. Right, right. There's kind of these different periods. And obviously, yeah. Uh, James was saying about, you know, I'm sure there's tons of people who have the same experience as James playing on the official servers uh, when the Dreamcast first came out. But then there's kind of these people who, uh, yeah, who got into the Dreamcast later on. And if you do it now, of course, there's, you know, there's all yeah. all these lovely YouTube videos telling you what to do and loads of games online. You can get the Dream Pie. But yeah, I, I, that that period was, uh, was a little bit more iffy. I think I played for almost for like half a day trying to figure out the game and all of a sudden the Dreamcast starting doing the GD ROM noises and then suddenly a player appeared on my screen. Oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then finally the first player I've seen in my life on a Dreamcast online. <laughs> that was amazing. Hardly anyone around in those days. Yeah. Yeah, back then getting a full four player group that was not common. Oof. And I think that leads on nicely, actually, to to Harvey, because um, I suspect that you you joined the Dreamcast online scene even a little bit later than that. Yeah, a lot later, actually. I I think I was eight years old when the Dreamcast was, like came out, so mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't you know I was hitting two wooden blocks together probably, but um <laughs> I uh, I didn't I, I completely dodged the Dreamcast when I was a kid. I was, I've always been into video games, but I just never even saw one. Uh, and I bought one off Facebook Marketplace in 2020 and for a tenner, and it had a hole in the front of it, <laughs> like a big hole. And the, both the uh, eject and power buttons had been ripped out. And uh, I bought it off some dodgy guy in East London. And I <laughs> took it home and then I just decided to fix it and then got really into the, in, you know, physically into it and, and obsessed with modding it. And then I realized, you know, I heard that I think I listened to a Dream Pod episode uh, with um, Kazaid, him talking about the Dream Pie. And I thought to myself, God, that's so technical. That's way too technical for me. And then as time went on, I kind of became a bit more comfortable with the idea. And then I realized that it actually it's not that difficult. And I, I bought, I, I had a Raspberry Pi knocking around. I, you know, flashed it and uh, I made my vault, voltage line inducer. That I needed a bit of help with that. And I, and then I, I managed to get online. And when I first got online with PSO, I just, it blew my mind. Totally blew my mind. So that was in, yeah, 2020. And then I played throughout the pandemic, like, feverishly mm -hmm. on PSO because mm -hmm. it was the only game that would work for me at the time. Uh, I oh, couldn't yes. play. I really wanted to play. I could see all you, all everyone else playing all these amazing games and all I could play was PSO, which, you know, it's a good game to play, but, um, and then I moved house and the story changed, but we'll talk about that later, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, really interesting to hear how, how there's this this kind of diversity here and I, I i didn't even you know it's not something that i arranged it's just kind of happened to fall into place that we've got folks who who remember playing way back in the day uh, the golden age the dark age yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. you're, you're, you can always write a history book about 2012 it. definitely sounds like the dark ages <laughs> yeah it was 2000 must have been amazing you know james you're talking about you know, playing Choo Choo Rocket all night? Was it just, you know, you just open a game and it would fill up immediately? Yeah, from memory. I mean, obviously, I, I mean, I was like 15 back then. So uh, there's probably some rose-tinted goggles a little bit looking back at it now. But it was, mm -hmm. I certainly don't ever remember waiting for rooms. I mean, I don't think there were particularly lots of necessarily like hundreds of people online. But I think in the like three or four lobbies that were always open, mm. um, it didn't take long for rooms to fill up. I, I think... I can probably remember playing Toy Racer more online because that was just kind of my jam. I, I played Toy Racer like as if it was a AAA release, the amount of hours I put into that game. And <laughs> that I can remember always being busy. Like if mm. someone would drop a, drop out of the room, there'd be someone else in it almost instantly. And and that was my, that was really my kind of uh, just one more go game back in the day. Um, mm. But yeah, it was, uh, I, I guess I never knew any different because I didn't come from the PC gaming world with GameSpy and all the, you know, the huge kind of infrastructure that was going on there. It was, um, that's what online gaming was to me. Um, 
So I guess it felt probably a lot busier than it actually was because it, it was just completely new to me, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I um, personally, I, I first got into playing the Dreamcast online in, uh, I think it would have been about 2005. Um, I, I got a Dreamcast secondhand, totally missed it, just like Harvey, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of first time around. I had a PlayStation at the time, and that was my world. And um, as kind of nerdy teenager later on, I remember discovering the Dreamcast, and I just got obsessed with the idea of playing it online. And um, at that point, you could still just plug in. I played it on real dial-up. So just plugged it into the wall. And um, yeah, P- the PSO service was still online in Europe at right. that time. And so you could just you could just log on. And it was, I, I mean, it, it was amazing to me. But, but you, yeah, you'd log on. And there, there were still a few people kicking around. Um, but yeah, it was at that time, uh, soon after that, it soon got a lot more difficult because... Um, you know, the official servers, the ones that were remaining started to go down. And then if you wanted to connect to unofficial servers, you had to do, it was just a madness. Like um, I remember getting code breaker codes and putting them in to kind of direct you towards someone's private server, <laughs> things like that. It just makes you appreciate like the current state with Dream Pie, especially where, you know, literally every game works out of the box and it's just, you know, dial up as you would have done back in the day and and you're connected and everything and it, it does when you talk talk about the early the early kind of unofficial dreamcast online scene it, it's amazing how far it's come to the point where it's you know it's as easy to get online with the dreamcast as it is to go online with your xbox or your playstation these days you know exactly yeah it, i mean there's still some some barriers to entry but but they're they're much lower yeah and you know everyone who plays online is um well, most of us anyway, uh, are very friendly. And, you know, if you've got issues, if you do run into issues, you can just ask for advice. Nine times out of 10, you can get things sorted. So, um, yeah. So anyway, there's no excuse, in other words. And if you're <laughs> listening to this and you've got a Dreamcast, you should you should plug it up and, um, yeah, come and challenge me for a few laps of something. Uh, all right. I think that's enough ice breaking for now. And we'll... We'll move on to the main part of this episode, which I am calling the Dreamcast Online Games Draft. So basically what this section is going to be is our expert panel that we've gathered gathered together here today are going to identify the best games, the worst games, and the games whose online revival you should be yearning the most. And of course, given our exquisite taste and uh, you know masses of brain capacity, our choices should be taken as definitive. However, if listeners would like to contribute your thoughts, then uh, your comments are always welcome. So uh, first up is the category of best online Dreamcast game. And it's, it's pretty simple, really. Uh, each of the guests is going to nominate a title that they think is worthy of that moniker. The only hang-up, potentially, is that we're going to have to go in some kind of order. And um, so, yeah, your choice may already... You may get gazumped by someone else, but I'm hoping that you've got a second choice in the back pocket. So, um, first up, how about Holston? You tell us which game you think is best for the uh, Dreamcast Online. Well, I think the best game, the best experience playing online right now on the Dreamcast would be Quake Free Arena with Mechanic and the rest of the Frag Night crew on Fridays. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it for over two years and I'm always looking forward to it, despite all its shortcomings compared to the PC version. Right, right. So so that's, a, I mean, that's kind of hard evidence there, I suppose. If you've been playing it every Friday for two years, then there must be something good about it. It's a classic. It's a great game, great community. Yeah, maybe you should explain to people what Frag Night is to you and to, you know, because we know what it is, but um, maybe the listeners might want to know exactly what you're referring to when you say Frag Night. Every Friday, 8 p.m. EST, Mechanic sets up his Quake server. Some of them are modded, some of them are basic. And we get a bunch of guys together, hanging out in voice chat, having a good time. Mechanic may or may not have had a few beers by then, I'd imagine as well. Knowing Mechanic. Very likely, <laughs> yes. 
It's it's not a it's not a frag night without beer. That's for yeah, sure. I think yeah, Quake is a is a great choice. It was the game I think that really kickstarted the Dreamcast's online life back in the day. You know, it was the yeah. first real big. Uh, look, we can do what PC can do kind of moment as far as online gaming is concerned. And, you know, as you said, Dalston, despite its shortcomings compared to PC, I mean, the, probably the, the most glaring one is obviously only having four players um, can play together. Um, mm-hmm. But it runs so well on Dreamcast. Um, but just don't turn up to Frag Night unless you've got a keyboard and mouse. Otherwise, no, actually, I, I wouldn't say that. You that's, reckon? That's not true. We we have We have several... Very good players without mouse and keyboard. Mr. Video. Like Mr. Video. I take it back. Take it back. <laughs> even, even I have started to to use a controller a lot more to not discourage all the new players who are joining up recently. Yeah. Okay. I take it back. So it's so it's more of a, a leveling of the playing field, is it? It's be, it's just being fair. It's a little bit being fair. It's also more fun if you if you if you have closer games. Mm-hmm. I think I think there are actually a bunch of regular players. I, I would assume like Totas is very off, shows up very often. He seems to play to play on a controller, tagged. I think from what it looks like at least. Mm. We even have, we have we even have one guy who's playing on his emulator on a phone <laughs> without controller at all, and he is pretty good. I have played with him, and he is good. He is actually quite good i don't even know i don't even know how he, how he does it <laughs> when i use an emulator i lo- at least lose a uh, use a controller with that you know you got you got to give respect to someone for that for how difficult it must be but i don't know why I, why I completely... like a million things you could do <laughs> on your phone like uh for me it's uh, you know i'd want to be playing it on my dreamcast i mean if i'm not at home i'm also playing on the phone but at least i'm bringing a bluetooth controller with me yeah. the touch screen is not work out for i me. think it's the novelty you Absolutely. know like you could um connect from a pc and join you know obviously and, and it would be a better frame rate infinitely moddable but there's something really quite mm-hmm. charming about booting up i play it on when i whenever i've played the quake um frag nights and they are every friday every friday night every it's friday. unbelievable how de- i've only been to maybe four or five uh, but these guys play it every friday it's incredible um, there's something quite, I don't know the word to use, maybe grounding about using a keyboard and mouse with an old console. It's just quite fun and interesting. And like, for me, the novelty hasn't worn off yet. It's taking your, when you do play with a Dreamcast mouse, taking your, your old school trackball out to clean it every once in a while, which really takes me back to, <laughs> to late nineties PC, uh, use, you know. Yeah. We line them all up and we say, clean your balls, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your balls. Let's clean them. <laughs> do you know, it's a really good point though, as well. I think talking about Dreamcast online in general, and, and I find it really fascinating as someone who was sort of you know heavily involved in dreamcast online gaming when it was contemporary the draw to me to go back to it and what keeps me going back to it now is that there's still that nostalgia light that comes on and and every time i sort of Mm -hmm. see that dialing connection it takes me back to 16 year old me in my bedroom you know waiting to play a game and and that's that's my reason for coming back and it's i find it amazing that there are people you know such as such as um you know some of the people on this this uh, this podcast today who didn't necessarily experience it back in the day, but still have that kind of like you said that charm about going back and playing on retro hardware. I think it's mm-hmm. it's really interesting to see how people go back to or why people just you know choose to play on Dreamcast Online instead of as you say playing these games elsewhere. Yeah, it's there's definitely a whole host of different motivations. I mean, I, I don't have the nostalgia, but um, but I, I think I gave it a go, and the people that we play, you play with, because it's such a small group of people, you get to know everyone, and you just like hanging out with them, and and you know, and so it just kind of becomes its own its own thing quite quickly. Um, but Quake Three, I think Quake Three, yeah, is is a great choice. It would definitely be a lot of people's choice, especially mechanic. I mean, if you didn't pick PSO first, of course. <laughs> Me- Mechanic's quite a big, uh, or used to be quite a big Monaco fan as well. I don't know if he still is, but uh, yeah, I think he- he'd have a tough choice to make. Indeed, yeah. I, I was surprised it, w- it wasn't Monaco, uh, Monaco yeah, Holston. No, nobody but... nobody mad likes to play with me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you are top of the leaderboard, Holston. Yeah, I mean that—that's—that uh, just took time. That's not hard to do. 
You just have, so you just need to have time. Are you still on the leaderboard, James? I I, I don't think so. I, I did have a few. I didn't. I, I'll caveat it by saying I didn't have them all. I had a few times, and then I I I don't think I've got any now. I mean, one one of the main reasons I did it was pretty much to piss off mechanic a little bit because he always <laughs> said, "I'm never I'm never gonna do it." But it took me like like one and a half years, and I did it. So that's a good motivation. Ironically, Mech has still got the Germany track records, which you need to go in and do. <laughs> We'll get we'll get mechanic on to an episode later. He can set the set the record straight. Okay, so so we have Quake Three, which I think is is yeah. I, I have no qualms with having that as one of the best Dreamcast games online. Uh, Harvey, how about you, mate? What would you like to bring to the table? So I did want to choose Fantasy Star Online, but I'm not going to choose that because I feel like it's quite obvious and it's you know it's the easiest one to connect to and you know everyone's first kind of foot in the door, but. The mm-hmm. one I'm going to go with, the one that I have probably had the most fun with, it's been really interesting. And, you know, it's a bit like Quake in the sense you can get it anywhere else better. Um, but I really quite like playing uh, playing on the Dreamcast with all the, with, all, with everyone, is Worms World Party. Oh, yeah. I just, I think it's so much fun. And I love Worms. Obviously, everyone loves Worms. And it's just a timeless, you know, a timeless format. And I love the way it's two-dimensional. It's not 3D. It's, and no, it doesn't matter, you know, because the, there was this mm-hmm. fussiness with 2D, 3D. And it's just good, solid gameplay and that feeling of really wanting to nail someone after they've, you know, <laughs> or really wanted, really dying to wipe someone's team out. I always lose. And I still enjoy it. No, no, no. You you don't come in here and claim the mantle of world, world, <laughs> worst Worms player because you, you've you seen me play on PC Wizard Stream before. And that is my thing to hold on to. <laughs> That's the most fun. If everybody sucks at Worms, then it's the most fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every, every time I play Worms online on a Friday, I will... I will blow myself up in some spectacular way and it's never intentional <laughs> never intentional I've just every every time I forget what button does what and what I've got to hold down and how long I've got to hold it down for it's uh, yeah the controls yeah. are a bit gnarly aren't they it's like two buttons for jump yeah. and then you can do it there's three types of jump like and you can do a backflip and it's uh, just I just I because obviously when we play on a Friday we I normally I don't know if you're the same normally I have PC stream up whilst we're playing and yeah of course of talking on there yeah. and I'm always I'm watching PC and the way he moves around the board is just like I don't get how he's just so effortless it's like watching ballet I know it really is <laughs> he is good it really is he is really really good and you know like when you're in a match when it's on live on YouTube and you can see that there's like you know ten eleven people playing it's such a it's such yeah. a rush. It's yeah. so it's so exciting. I just love what that guy does. You know, he's he's a real pillar for the you know online community. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm running out of uh, choices here, lads, because I'm, I'm <laughs> all of my games getting picked. But, but um, yeah, Worms World Party Christ. I mean, I just put here a case study in the effectiveness of simplicity. I mean, it's just as you say, it's like it's just Worms, and Worms is great. And I don't think it even added that much. Worms will play. Yeah, it, I think it's pretty much Worms Armageddon, just with the online mode. Yeah, but, pretty much. Yeah, it's strange that. You yeah, would have thought but, there'd be more differences, you know, different cover art, different name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think just the addition of the online mode is is sufficient. And mm. um, it's, just, uh, it's just such it's just such a great game. I mean, that turn, the turn-based mechanics as well of it mean that you kind of have that, you have that, time to kind of have a breather uh in between moves which is yeah. good for me because i don't and on that note as well yeah. i think you know talking about experience today in 2023 you know it's it's the perfect friday night chill out game where we're kind of yes it's great to play online on dreamcast but i think from a social perspective because as we've been saying pc will have the stream up we'll all be chatting in in the stream and it's just Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. you've got that time in between moves you know it's just a nice opportunity to to catch up with the community and you know talk about things going on whilst trying to murder each other in a a less frantic way than quake so yeah (laughs) I mean, it's it tends to be pretty popular when uh, Hol- Holston helps run the Sega Online Discord as well. And I, I think whenever Worms World Party comes up in there, it tends to be a pretty popular choice, doesn't it, Holston? Yeah, pretty much. And everybody, everybody, everybody who joins is terrible at it, which makes it a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, so Worms World Party, um, yeah. I, d- I don't have any qualms about that being included as a best 
Dreamcast online game, not at all. Apart from maybe that it might it was going to be your choice. Apart from that, yeah. <laughs> um, actually, you know what? You know, let's let's get down to reality. I think they did miss a trick not allowing you to chat in game. That's the one negative definitely uh, for that title. And that probably yeah. wouldn't have been too hard to implement, would it? I don't know much about game design, but you can't even keyboard chat. Can no. you? I mean, there's no microphone support, and you can't even keyboard can't do, chat. You can't keep your yeah. keyboard chat, which is yeah, weird. Very yeah. strange. But do, do you know what? Like, I've never had too much trouble with Worms uh, connecting to it. But I know some people really, really struggle, and people t- t- tend to say that the I don't know that what do they call it the web code or something. I don't know what I'm um, yeah. is really really poor with Worms. Oh, okay. Yeah, we. I know Shu found a load of potential issues with it because we had one instance once where we were in a lobby and we managed to get um, five people in a lobby once. And uh, <laughs> obviously, when we when we launched it, it obviously crashed. But it was kind of that was the thing: five player worms up for for one one night only sort of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for those who who are listening who aren't who might not be as au fait with with Dreamcast Online. Basically, there there are some games. It is, on the whole, it's a very easy thing to do, but there are some games that tend to be a bit more finicky than others. And um, Worms is notorious for being one of those. Um, so basically, if, you, if you're going to play it, uh, you probably want to do some tests first to check that you're running because the issue is is that if if it won't work for you and you ju- try and join a game with three other people it has this great feature where it crashes every yeah. <laughs> crashes everyone's game it's to do with your port forwarding or your dm dmz settings i think so DMZ. yeah mm-hmm. most yeah. of the time yeah 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 but when it runs it's yeah it's hard to be worms or party mm. All right, we'll we'll. Uh, I think I'll go last here. I'll allow James the the third choice. Um, I just need to given think, that... think what you're going to pick now, just so I can pick another one away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know this is? It is a really difficult question to answer this because I think um, you know there are so there's such a good variety of games available to play online on Dreamcast, and each of them I think offers something very different, or for the most part, to each other. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, unlike a Call of Duty or something where you just kind of play it solidly for two or three months, the the thing about how most of us uh, play Dreamcast Mm -hmm. online is kind of dipping in and out of different games all the time. Yeah. So it's a struggle. Um, I agree with what Harvey said around, you know, Fantasy Star Online, if you're just arguably talking about the best experience and the most seamless experience and probably what feels like the most modern experience Definitely. of playing online. Mm. Um, there's there's no second to that. Um, we mentioned mm. Monaco Grand Prix Online, which is one of my personal favorites. Um, Netcode isn't the best on it, but you know it's a six-player racing game online. So again, you can't really knock that. It's got to say a shout out to Mobile Suit Gundam, just being a, you know, a yeah. phenomenal game that kind of most of us didn't get a chance to play being a Japanese only release but having mentioned half the library um, <laughs> I think my uh, overall choice is going to be a bit of a left field one but it's Maximum Pool yes Ooh, that's very good what a choice for us kind of uh, PAL users it was a game that again most of us wouldn't be particularly familiar with being a I think it was US only I don't think it came out in Japan mm-hmm. Um but yeah, again, such a great, I mean, you've got to take some points off for using Comic Sans or whatever the hell they use font-wise on the main menu. But it's just, it's a great online experience. You've got normal pool, nine ball, eight ball, but then you've got all these different weird and crazy shaped tables. You've got bombs, you've got all sorts of stuff. Um I find the sound effects really satisfying. Like if you're playing with some of the games that have got money stakes on it, and when you pot a ball in a certain pocket, you get like the the jingling of change sort of thing that comes up, little things like that. Um, But yeah, great experience, really good fun to play, supports four people, so you can do kind of four people in one game, um, one after the other. And uh, and yeah, loads and loads of different modes. And another one of those kind of really good chill-out games, I think, that you can just play and enjoy socializing with the community. So for all those reasons, and it pains me not to select half a dozen if not more games in this list um i'm mm. gonna go with maximum pool 
That's a great choice. And, and you know what? Maximum pool seems to work quite well. Um, mm. I, don't, I haven't had many problems with it, so it seems to be quite successful with the connection. And it's something yeah. about the, the music is so Twin Peaksy. Yeah. So stylish, yeah. isn't it? Apart from, you know, the Comic Sans, we'll, we'll ignore that for now. But yeah. it's really <laughs> stylish otherwise. Um, and I don't know. I remember like a certain nights playing with you, Lars, we were like, oh, what should we play? And we always just go, Maximum Pool. Yeah, let's play some Maximum Pool. <laughs> I was just playing for hours just chatting. And, you know, another game where I like often lose, but still really enjoy playing it. It's so good. Never gets boring. And there's text chat. You can you can type. And it's you brilliant. Can. It's yeah. Brilliant. I've got a bit of a spot, a soft spot for pool games anyway. Like I always used to love playing virtual pool on the PC, virtual pool two, and always love pool games. And I think um, mm-hmm. because of the style of maximum pool, it's kind of the top down view. It's aged really well. So you yeah. can play it now and it doesn't yeah. feel like an old game either. And yeah, it's just, it's just a good time. That's the, the best compliment I can give it. It's another one of the choices, Dan. I'm going to be laughing here, but um, yeah, I, I wholly agree. It's the connoisseur's choice, I think, because um, yeah, it's not obvious. Very purist of you, James. Very purist. Thank you, thank you. I think everyone's just shocked I didn't pick a racing game. To no, be honest, great choice. Great choice. Well, yeah, the cursed menus. That menu is so cursed. Like, how do you even navigate it? <laughs> oh that yeah, half the fun. It. Yeah, got to go into the room, press a different button to like switch to the other panel. And, yeah. yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I can only imagine it. I mean, I always give the excuse that oh, you know, they were new to new to making games online but it's like that's just basic menu yeah design. it's, it's <laughs> horrific isn't it oh my god yeah but once you get past that once you get past that yeah solid game solid, solid game nothing revolutionary yeah it's sierra i think that, that made that game yeah. isn't it yeah they they just nailed it and um as harvey says the kind of laid back vibes that the game gives off are just yeah they're just great and they're totally different to some of the more frantic kind of uh heart attack inducing games that are elsewhere on the Dreamcast. If I may, Lars, before we move on, I, I do I do have an honourable mention for Toy Racer just because of my, <laughs> my nostalgia to it. Um, and I think yeah. if, if it did have more than four tracks, I think it would be a hell of a lot more popular online now. Um, but yeah, for, for what that game is, I think it's just it's just good fun. Sorry, I had, I had, to, I had to get Toy Racer in there. It's such a great game. I was half expecting that. I was half expecting. Well, I, I wrote a retrospective on it on the junkyard because mm. it was like you know it's one of those games that just it, it seems most people completely bypassed it because it was like a five quid game when it came out and um, right. You know, it was uh, yeah, it wasn't a, a big release, but it was it just worked online, which is what it was designed to do. Yeah, definitely, definitely check that. Out. That's another thing that we will have to link to in the show notes. And um, what's good about doing the best games first is that now I know which games you love, I can shoot them all down when we get to the <laughs> worst games. Um, Holston, I think you, you're um, quite the pool player, aren't you, Maximum Pool? Um, what do you reckon about that, about that game being nominated as one of the best? I, it would have been my very close second choice. I play mm-hmm. it almost every weekend against my all-time rival, Allbush. <laughs> Shout out, Allbush. Shout out to Allbush. We are very kind of equal in skill. Both like to play on the expert mode with guiding lines turned off. And sometimes mm-hmm. we even had game sessions that lasted like five hours without break. Wow. It never gets boring. Come on then, Lars. What's yours? Yeah, my my uh, selection is going to be, yeah, the, the obvious choice, which is Fantasy Star Online. And um, I think it's already been mentioned. It's It's basically the showcase for online capabilities on the Dreamcast. Technically speaking, just amazing uh, for the year that it was released in. And I think they also really nailed the player experience side of things too. Rather than being a game with an online mode that feels like it's been tacked on later on, it, it just feels like the entire game has been built around this idea of playing online and um, just having this kind of social style of play which is obviously helped by it being co-op. But um, yeah, just really pioneering game. Um, all, all the features on there, like the guild card and the simple mail system, quick chat, all of that just blew my mind when I first played it. Uh, I couldn't believe that they had implemented those features so early on. 
So, um, yeah, I, I think the gameplay, just, just quickly, um, I will say the gameplay, I think, is a bit marmite that There's lots of folks out there who probably... Uh, if they don't, if you don't enjoy the kind of grinding aspect of it, then there's probably not too much in the gameplay for you. But um, given how pioneering it was, and given how gorgeous it is today, I mean, if you play Mines in Ultimate mode, it's just it just looks amazing. So anyway, I could carry on forever, so I'll, I'll leave it there. What what do you uh, folks think about PSO being nominated as the best Dreamcast game online? That is. I think the fact that it was just on the note of it looking so good, I think, you know, the fact that it was pretty much ported as is to Xbox and GameCube, um, you know, shortly after the Dreamcast demise just kind of shows you how strong it was, um, you know, as a as a showcase, really, of these, this kind of like dungeon crawler type online game. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, I've, again, it's a game I played a lot back in the day when it first came out because it was obviously one of the, the later Dream, well, the, fancy on on. Well, Fancy Star Online version two was one of the latest, uh, the later Dreamcast uh, games ever released. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of a way to just get some more life out of the uh, the grey box at the time. Uh, yeah. Loved it back in the day. It was unlike anything I'd ever played before. Um, and yeah, it's I still jump in from time to time. Um, I know PC again runs a um, runs a, a, a live stream session every Saturday. I think it is. So I jumped in a few times with them. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, you hit the nail on the head, Loz. I mean, if if you don't like grindy things like you know Diablo and things like that, then you probably won't enjoy um, uh, Fancy Star Online. But uh, yeah, it's it's just such a fantastic showpiece of what the Dreamcast could do from an online perspective. And I I remember back in the day actually when it was quite busy, and it was a it was a horrendous game for hackers who used to get in and, <laughs> and steal all your stuff all the time. You, you, you wouldn't want to spend too long in the online lobbies, but the lobbies were amazing in the main ship where you could go in and there was like a big football pitch oh, so and a huge that. football. And back in the day, you'd get like, you know, dozens of people on that, in that area sort of thing. Just You spend like an hour just knocking the football around. It's just, mm-hmm. just fantastic. Mm-hmm. And yeah, obviously, I then turned into a big Destiny player back in uh, when Destiny came out, and I think a big part of that was kind of the, you know, the, the fancy Star Online nostalgia that I had, and kind of that same grind mechanic, grind for better gear, and you know, doing stuff yeah. over and over, mm-hmm. harder difficulty and stuff. And um, yeah, it's it, it's it's definitely a game that holds up well today. And I think, you know, unlike a lot of the other Dreamcast games online, that you, as we've been saying, you play them online because it's you know, there's some nostalgia or there's some charm in playing an old console online now. I think PSO is genuinely, you know, a, a game that you can't really get that exact same experience elsewhere that um, that, that is still great fun to play now, especially if you're in a good uh, a good party. Yeah, it's so good looking and it sounds amazing. The music's really, really wonderful. And what's interesting about it is that the community, the PSO community is, is huge because they play on, yeah. um, then there's cross... Um, Cosplay, yeah, between yeah. C- only certain ones, isn't it? It's like PC and DC, so a computer and Dreamcast, mm-hmm. and then Xbox and GameCube. Is that right? And they play together, and and the, there's a huge uh, the service called Silverant, isn't it? And the um, mm-hmm. the Discord's massive on there. People play constantly all the time. It's really cool. It's funny because uh, yeah, it almost kind of dwarfs the Dreamcast online scene. It's like there's there there are lots of people who who play their Dreamcast online, but they basically just play PSO. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people. Uh, there's so many people who just play PSO. Yeah. Uh, right. I think uh, I think we'd best uh, crack on, and, and we're we're going to now move from reality into the lovely world of daydreaming. So. Um, Instead of talking about games that are online now, what we're going to do is have a think about the games that could come online in the future and which ones we most anticipate to see that happening for. So, um, Holston, what do you reckon? What are you most looking forward to coming back online down, uh, you know, down a couple of years down the line? Well, as a big Craig Free fan, I would love to see Craig World online on the Dreamcast. I would be exciting for that. I thought Shu was really close with getting that working for a while and then it just kind of, I don't know if his priorities went on to other things, but I'm sure he was he had a version running, didn't he, for a while? I saw that somewhere. I don't know. I heard that for like, since t- for two years I'm hearing that, but yeah. nobody really knows what's going <laughs> on. 
And for, for those of us, the uninitiated, could you explain what Quake World is? <sighs> That's a good question. As far as I, <laughs> as far as I know, it's 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 is it the first Quake and just online for then the Dreamcast? I don't know. It's 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 more Quake as far as I know, and that's always a good thing. <laughs> more Quake with more players. I see. So it's like a mod. Yeah, it's based on the um, the original source code, I think, isn't it? Um, and it just basically, yeah, is an on. It, it's a modified version of the original Quake, but obviously focused on online with God knows what maps and whatever else mods that they've put into is it. Is it an official mod or is it totally fan made? I don't think it's official, but they did release the source code, didn't they? <sighs> um, I believe I could be completely wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure they released they released the source code. Um, uh, is there a community that play on an, on another platform that play Quake World? I think it was. Yeah, I think there's a PC. Um, it's, it's not my scene, so I'm only going mm. off passing, but I'm pretty sure that it's P- PC as well, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, interesting. So it's so a, a kind of left-field answer, I suppose, because it's not an official release, but that's another another kind of indie indie game. I mean, it's it's listed as work in progress. I, I have some hope. And more, more Quake on the Dreamcast is always a good thing. Oh, of course, yeah. Well, you showed me up there, Holston, because I actually had no idea what that was. So it's something for me to investigate. I've um, been mean, hearing about it for some long time. Nobody really knows right. what the status is right now, but I have some hope. <laughs> yeah, I suppose if it's been teased for a long time and it's just more Quake, then that's that's the kind of great combo for you, for your taste. More Quake with more players. Can't go wrong. Well, yeah, on Dreamcast, DreamcastLive.net, it says eight players and supports the BBA and is a work in progress, but I presume it's been a work in progress for a while. But that's that's pretty cool. I didn't even know that existed, Holston. Nice one. Well, we're all learning something new today. Um, <laughs> right, so uh, Harvey, and this, uh, we it still uh, confu- confuses me to this day a little bit when I saw that we've got James Harvey and Harvey Jones. I mean, I know it's a second name and a first name, but when I first saw you two online somewhere, I thought you were the same person. Um, <laughs> it's a little close, isn't it? Uh, it was probably in, because on my, um, if I'm in the chat room in PC stream, it'll just be my full name. It'll just be James Harvey on there. And then you've got Harvey Jones underneath. So it was probably. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you're just trying to steal my yeah, lap yeah. times, aren't you? <laughs> um <laughs> So the real Harvey, the real Harvey, Harvey Jones, how about you? What, what are you most looking forward to? Um, I am, oh, there's a game that I love so much, but this game, it saddens me because as an offline experience, it's just very, very vanilla, very boring. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what it's like as an online experience, but I feel that if it was online, it would be so, so, so good. And I'd play it all the time. And that game is Outrigger. Oh, good choice. Act Trigger is a uh, first-person shooter uh, on the Dreamcast developed by Sega. Uh, I think it was um, uh, Yu Suzuki. Did he have something to do with it? I think he may have. Was it AM2? Yeah, it was. I think he was the executive producer. Anyway, it's like mm-hmm. a super fun, um, really, really fast-paced, close-quarters shooter um, and it's gorgeous. It looks really, really... It's a really good-looking game. Uh, not many people talk about it because, as I said... As an offline experience, it's quite shallow, um, but it's. I'm mm-hmm. sure it would really shine in, in like an online experience. You can use a uh, keyboard and mouse. You can use a controller. The controller's not too bad, to be honest with you, for a first-person shooter. They they did quite a good. Um, they they kind of got around it quite well with the controls, but it's best played with the keyboard and mouse. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think it's great. It run, runs really fast and it works with the BBA. And um, I am currently trying to play through the entire arcade mode, which I'm really enjoying. Uh, it reminds me a bit of like a bit of Counter Strike. Um, it, it's a completely mm-hmm. different game in terms of the, the style. It's Out Trigger is a lot more wild and wacky and unrealistic, but like they have a similar yeah. feeling, and I feel like uh, it would just be a fantastic addition to the online library. That was another PAL game that got the online modes lynched from it as well, wasn't it? It was, yes. It happened quite a lot towards the end. Well, yeah. it, well, while the online was on, I mean, you know, Daytona was the same, and that wasn't. That was a bit earlier on, and that didn't have online either over here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. Well, 
it's because they're just mean. They're really mean, and they don't like us. Yeah. <laughs> Spoken like a true pal. <laughs> it is odd, because I, I thought, yeah, maybe it was because, like, um, the PAL releases tended to be later anyway, and so by then the, it would have been even more obvious that the Dreamcast was, was going to be going in the bin, and so maybe that was why. But then again, the, you know, who knows? Who can, who can really believe that? Because sega are just strange and go and release like monaco online and i think monaco came out later the online version came out later than out trigger and um daytona and stuff only in pal as well yeah precisely yeah so it's um it's just very messy in that respect but i i that's that's definitely one of the titles that i'm anticipating the most harvey because i think basically quake is probably objectively the better arena first person shooter but i associate it more with the pc in my mind whereas out trigger just screamed sega yeah yeah it's definitely got the sega feel it's to fruity it, it? and fast and just wacky and like yeah it's really really sega that's very arcadey yes and it just and it obviously it was built built for the hardware so that's why it runs so great and i uh, is it how many how many players is it is it four four, four. okay okay It'd be better if it was eight but i mean those arenas are quite small so maybe four is um appropriate mm. four mm. players split screen is a lot of fun actually yeah i've done that yeah holston i, I heard you grumbling a little bit in the background there. was that <laughs> grumbles grumbles of agreement or or disagreement or uh, no i'm i would kind of disagree that the out trigger is has good controls on the controller I couldn't find you can you have to choose what a configuration a pre-made mm-hmm. one and I couldn't find any good one for the Dreamcast controller. I see. Yeah, I think I think I was being quite charitable. It's really really annoying that you can't map uh, buttons to do certain things. Like in Quake, you can map anything. It's amazing. Even even when you use mouse and keyboard, it's not W A S D to move. It's it's something else. It's E S D F. It's so stupid. It's like one key to the right. It's like, well, how could they have done that? <laughs> What's wrong with them? Yeah, and you cannot change it. But yeah, you're right. And you know, when you get used to it, it's okay. But it is just a silly, yeah. silly thing that the controls are just ever so slightly not, not quite right. Could that be done with a mod? I don't know about. I don't know much about modding, modding Dreamcast games. But is that something that could be done in, with a mod? I mean, why not? You know, maybe we just need to set someone to it um ian michael maybe are you listening <laughs> get on with that i, I need to learn the names of what is in the scene because i just ask Ian michael to do everything all the time <laughs> um yeah so i'm not what i'm going to do this time is given that james on the last round decided to just name about half a dozen games and completely because something i am <laughs> gonna have him go last this time so i uh, there's no way you'd pick mine anyway but go on <laughs> <laughs> uh, well um yeah i think the most anticipated game for me aside from out trigger which was my first choice is a title called Hundred Swords. Mm. And uh, what that is, is a um, Smilebit produced RTS game. Uh, and Smilebit, I believe, were just a um, uh, just one of Sega's development teams. It's kind of your standard RTS game in some respects, in that you know, you're commanding an army and you go around a battlefield fighting others. But it, it's got these like really quite intense storytelling aspects and it kind of just yeah it just kind of feels like the rpgs of the time like final fantasy and the like uh in terms of its aesthetics and its storytelling but it's an rts game and i mean it's a bit janky um it's you know it's it's certainly not objectively the best rts game out there but i think for the dreamcast it could just offer something very different to what we currently have there's basically nothing else like it uh, in the current online library, and in fact, it's it's kind of a genre that we were we didn't get hardly anything uh, like that on the Dreamcast. I mean, I think we got Conflict Zone, but that was absolute dross, awful, awful game. Mm-hmm. Whereas Hundred Swords is at least um, you know it, it is is at least a decent game and has some really nice artwork and the like. So I think that's that's what I'm going to put forward. Um, any thoughts on Hundred Swords? Interesting choice. I had I've never even heard of this game. 
I thought it was a fighting game, according to the names. <laughs> so a weapons-based fighting game, I assumed it was. Yeah. Like something you find on the Neo Geo or something. So have you played it much offline, Loz? Sadly, there's never been an English translation for the Dreamcast. Yeah. Um, but an English version was released on PC back in the day. And I remember playing it on PC. Uh, you used to be able to pick it up in like those like three for ten pound PC game oh, yeah. offers. And um I just saw Sega on there and thought, yeah, I'll get that. And um it's it is it is a it's a decent game and it's just something that you don't really think of when you think of the Dreamcast. It, it I think it could just add some nice diversity to our current online library. Nice choice. James, you've been very quiet there in the background. How about we hear what you are looking forward to most? I'm just narrowing my list down, to be honest. Um, just <laughs> put it into four different categories. and uh, <laughs> No, just to keep up with awkwardness then. Again, you know, much like my first answer, there are a number of games that I'm looking forward to coming back online and just uh, strictly keeping to the ones that are quote unquote work in progress, which at least means that some progress has been made in bringing them back mm-hmm. on. Because mm-hmm. uh, as we all know, even though something's not in progress at the moment, by tomorrow it could be online, given how these things work with the releases we've had um, in the past. Uh, I've got to mention Daytona just because, Mm. and I would say I'm not a huge fan of Daytona USA on Dreamcast. I don't think the handling is particularly great, but the opportunity to play that online just makes it infinitely better. So that is is definitely one of them. Um, And similarly, uh, from a racing perspective, Speed Devils Online, which I know is a big... um, sort of uh, demand or much demanded game from the Dreamcast community to come back online. I think that would be a a fantastic game to be able to play back online as well um, from a racing perspective. But the the choice that I'm going to make is one that I, I was led to believe last time I spoke to Shu was, was actually relatively, and I use the term very loosely, relatively close to being back online, but I know there's been some significant progress in it. And it is the Japanese release of Neto D Tennis. Oh, it is. It works. Yeah. So I see, I know, I'm pretty sure PC showed some online footage of it uh, at some point. But from an online perspective, it ticks all the boxes. It looks awesome. It, it's a simple game that you can play online. I don't think lag or anything like that, you know, is going to be too much of an issue. And if you watch any any gameplay footage of it from on YouTube or whatever, if you enjoyed things like Smash Court Tennis back in the day on PlayStation, it's got that sort of same. Uh, graphical style to it and i just think that could be mega fun online just being able to rock up play some tennis um you know do a few games and then uh and call it a night so for two reasons then one because it sounds like it's it's relatively uh relatively good progress has been made on it um and second well three choices i guess secondly because it looks like a really good game and thirdly because it's a it's another one of those japanese releases that i think would have passed most of us by um given that it never saw the light of day outside of japan so much like gundam i think it would be you know a, a big a breathe of complete fresh sort of uh, perspective on, uh, on online gaming on dreamcast so yeah netto de tennis is uh, is my choice great choice there we are well if you ever needed some motivation to get that one up and running um he now has it do it for me Shu. Do it for me, Shu. Yeah, so there, were, they, there was some, yeah, that footage that I guess you watched, James, that PC Wizard posted to his, um, what are they, what we call the people who support him, the Dreamcast. The, yeah, yeah, the members thing, yeah. Yeah, and I, I put a comment saying like, whoa, it's 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 working, and he commented saying something like, yeah, it's all working fine. But that was a long time yeah. ago, that was like... It was a long time, because I think it shares the same online uh, infrastructure as like the Street Fighter games and stuff as well, from memory. It's Capcom. It's Capcom. Capcom. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not too long ago, I've seen Sega RPG fan asking some people around if they wanted to test that game oh, with nice. him because yeah. it's nice. pretty much with a few bucks. It's actually kind of working as long as you don't click on anything once you're online. Yeah, on, on certain things. So that's probably it's probably just the fine tuning of yeah. it, as you say, yeah. making sure all the dead links are, are doing something. And um, yeah, I think from. I would guess that the idea is to release all the Capcom one stuff in one go, like when we had the the sports games all came out in one go because they all share the same 
the same um, net code and stuff. So so maybe that'll be what it is, and we'll get them all as a big bang release, uh, which would be lovely. Um, oh, while you're there, I, I'd like to quickly slip in Heavy Metal Geomatrix. That is an mm-hmm. interesting looking game that I've not really played. Yeah. That's Capcom, isn't it? And I guess if they do come out at the same time, that'll be there. Yeah, yeah. I'm really keen for that one. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess Loz... It would be remiss of us not to mention the um, the upcoming driving strikers as well. Mm, um, mm-hmm. You know, we we can't talk over this podcast talking of online gaming without mentioning, um, yeah, driving strikers and the first no, the first indie game to um, to support online play. Um, and knowing the amazing work that that Luke and Co do to from a community perspective um, with Simulant, and I know he was going to try and make the um, you know the online code available as well so hopefully it'll open the door to to future future online indie games as well so um i think most of us if not all of us have played the demos online everything works really well follow him on uh follow kazaid on uh patreon and he puts a lot of updates and the demo that i've played is a, a quite old now and i'm pretty optimistic like reading his updates over the past few months i'm quite optimistic about the final release's performance there's been so many iterations that's what's good about these games that are getting developed because i think harlequest are doing it as well they you know it's very transparent you get demos but um uh, i think the progress has been really pretty um substantial especially with like the controls because i remember the controls being a little bit unwieldy but yeah they're, they're a lot more intuitive now I think the graphics and everything and the menus, everything's going to look a lot tighter and a lot more, you know, pro. So, yeah. And on that, you can grab the hard copy. You can pre-order the hard copy now at Wave Game Studios for 20 quid instead of 30, which it will be on Mm -hmm. form release, Mm -hmm. which is a bargain. Got my pre-order in already. Yeah, me too. So if you want to support it, go and grab that. Yeah, but definitely, definitely check that check that out, and I think that can be in a category all of its own because it's not coming back online, but um, true, it's just coming, coming online, online. Yeah. just coming online. So it can be all all, all on its own. Um, right, so I think we'll now move on to um, the section of the draft that you well, you you may love to to, to do this, or or you may hate to do it, but I'm going to ask you to nominate your worst online Dreamcast games. Uh, I know over here in the UK, we're we're all very fond of having a good old moan sometimes, Holston. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't know if you're the same in Germany, um, but around these parts, yeah, we love to have a good old moan. Normally about the weather, but today it will be about bad online Dreamcast games. So I think first up, I will give the honours this time to James. So James, can you pick, can you pick a, a, a bad online Dreamcast game? I can. There's a really, really easy standout for me, which is probably controversial for a number of uh, people who I know love this game, but I've never got on with it. I've always had a really horribly laggy experience every time I played it, and that game is Ugga Bugga. <gasps> Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it was the lag that ruined it for me, but I think because I always played it with like PC and people who were in a you know different uh, different uh, uh, continent, it was uh, it, I just always had a really really bad experience, and I don't think the game plays that fun. I will give it some bonus points for the mode where you're basically trying to play football on rhinos or whatever it's called. <laughs> um, that makes the game worth it. Yeah, that that was good fun, but everything else just feels really flat and boring to me. And as I said, coupled with the laggy experience, um, yeah, that's that's easily my my least favorite Dreamcast game online. Booga booga. I like that pronunciation as well. Booga <laughs> booga. I've never ever never played it. I'm I'm after that roaring review i'm uh... <laughs> <laughs> well i would say don't don't take my word for it because lots of people including pc love that game when um, it's good it's really good yeah how often is it good <laughs> uh, yeah that's the thing i think i think most people there seems to be a consensus that when you play that game everyone just wants to get four people together to play ball polo yeah, that's the most fun. That does redeem it slightly. We we had some we had some great games. Some 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 of, some of them almost smooth. 
<laughs> and I think there, therein <laughs> lies the part that's the, the issue. Yeah, the, the lag on that game sometimes. I see. Uh, US only. Um, I don't know, as I said, if the lag is purely down to um, playing across countries, as I said, yeah. which obviously was, was never the intention. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure. We played with TOTAS from South America, two Germans, one from the UK, Laws, and TOTAS from South America, and it was almost very good running. Not every time. It, we also had very bad games. But but I will say, you know, lag doesn't on its own ruin a game. I mean, you look at um, Mobile Suit Gundam, and that's a pretty laggy game for the most part, but I don't think that really detracts too much from the gameplay. You just learn to kind of play it. Gundam is actually once mostly better than Ooga Booga, at least when I played it. Yeah, Ooga Booga is definitely the worst experience from a lag perspective. And as I said, I, I just don't find the gameplay rewarding enough to stick to it. Well, there we are. Very sorry to Ooga Booga fans out there. Um, you know, we'll, we'll give you James's address and you can send him some uh, some hate mail. Please don't maybe. get enough hate mail for my <laughs> spirit of speed uh, championing. <laughs> I'm, look- I'm so looking forward to reading that spread is it 10 pages 10 pages maybe my copy hasn't arrived yet i'm hoping i'm just ah, every day i'm just waiting well it'll be worth it'll be worth the wait but i am i'm really looking forward to it so you're looking forward to that harvey but what dreamcast game do you not look forward to playing online okay so um, i haven't actually played everything um Mm -hmm. but uh the one that just i booted up had a couple of games with uh miction uh, a guy who's quite active on the Sega Online Discord, and I just yeah. oh, I just hated it. I or, you know the other games like Worms, I lose. I have a great time. Um, you know, there's other games where I you know I don't need to win to enjoy them. Uh-huh. This game, I didn't. I've just lost. It's <laughs> anyway. There's there's two really big racing heads in the room, um, yeah. so I apologise. But this game is Pod Speed Zone. I just can't oh, get on with okay. it. I was going to pick that as one of my dozens of favorite online games. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid of that. I was going to pick it too as my worst game. Oh, oh your really? worst game? Okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Controversial. Yeah, me three. Me three. I've only had one or two goes on it and I just couldn't get on with it. I, I find it. I found it a bit, I felt a bit lonely. Mate, how many people yeah. can play at once? I played with only one other person. Four. I think because of the size of the tracks and the fact that there's so many different routes through the tracks, I yeah. think the lonely thing definitely, you don't get close races on it for the most part because, you, like you said, you end up just going off in your own direction. Um, but yeah, so I, I do I do totally agree with that. I just think it plays really well and the style of it is just awesome. Yeah, the menu is really interesting. And then this, the kind of, the, the era that it's trying to cover is, well, not era, the, like, the setting is quite interesting. All right, come on, Holston. Yeah, Holston's got to come in here and speak some sense. Hold him back. No, I can't hold it back. I mean, part is so ugly. Come on, guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it is. But ugly. It's all brown and green and, uh, and so much weird stuff on the track. Oh, come on. Not yeah. that I want to defend Pod, but isn't quite, quite brain? True. Yeah, but he likes <laughs> that game. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I... I, I Pod was going to be one of my selections, and I, and I I think it's mainly because aside from yeah, I'm not a fan of the design, uh, aesthetically speaking. But th- that point about feeling lonely uh, playing it, like even when you're playing a four player game, I don't feel like I'm racing anyone because you're just so spread out. Mm. Um, and I think they missed a trick there. Like I think it had some real potential, but um, but yeah, they, it's just I just never find it all that exciting and i i don't find myself wanting to go back to it so um yeah that was going to be one of my selections um but yes we'll we'll move on to another another awful online dreamcast game or at least in someone's opinion so uh holston do you want to tell us about a dreamcast game that you don't like playing online Right, part is already taken. Uh-huh. So next, next <laughs> in my line would be Toy Racer. Ooh. Oh, this will be good. Okay. Right. Ooh, very unpopular opinion. <laughs> I, I don't know. There's just nothing to it for me. I'm the yeah. I'm the first to admit. Look, it's it's very much the nostalgia goggles for me. Um, and as I said earlier, I think if it had like four more tracks, it would be a lot more enjoyable. 
that would make a huge difference. But yeah, very first time I hated it. The more I played, okay, yeah, it's not that bad. I I started liking Port more than Toy Racer, but that has changed over the years now. <laughs> the more I play Port, the more I dislike it. And Toy Racer ranked up a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's but just yeah, there's really not much to it, and no, and and I think it was ultimately, you know, back in the day again, it was like, it's literally just they've taken the the Toy Commander engine, built four race tracks out of it, and it's it's online only. There's no single player other than like time trial. It was literally released as a budget thing, presumably just to kind of give Europeans something else to play online. I think um, it wasn't it for charity. It was, yeah. It was. Oh. It was like five quid, and I think a pound of that went to went to charity at the time. Um, yeah, that's always the argument when you start talking shit about a toy racer, but that doesn't make it a great game or even a good game. <laughs> <laughs> I can, as I said, I think it's one of those games. If you don't have any sort of um, you know aff uh, affection to it it's once you've played it once you've pretty much seen everything the game has to offer mm, i quite enjoy it but it you know when you boot it up and there's like no music and it's quite dry with mm. just those user interface sounds it is quite you know similar to pod quite lonely but i guess you know what you said james about the tracks being too big in pod in toy racer they're a bit smaller and you can kind of see everyone else mm. going around so i quite like that and i do like the weapons on it and mm -hmm. i do quite like the way some of the um cars handle as well on toy racer and no, I, I do really like toy racer but i can understand you know people who don't like it i'm, I'm getting bored after like 10 minutes very quickly <laughs> yeah it's definitely not an all-nighter game yes agreed um where do i stand on toy racer I don't think I could possibly call it one of the worst, mainly because it's one of our PAL exclusives and we've got to stand up for the team, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, but also it's quite fun. And I think, yeah, it, uh, c compared to Pod, it is very different. It does some things right that I think Pod doesn't do, such as the weapons in Toy Racer are actually really, um, they're useful and, and they actually feel like they're making a difference to, to the race. So, um, yeah, I enjoy it. My choice for worst online game on the Dreamcast is the next Tetris. I don't really have to say much as to why that's one of the worst. I think there's just not a lot there. It's so vanilla. It's just Tetris. But Tetris is great. You I like go Tetris. Tetris. It's, it's awesome. such a great, you know, I don't need to tell, you know, convince people that Tetris is great. It's a great game. But um, why is the Dreamcast one just so boring? <laughs> yeah. I was really looking forward to playing no, online. No, no, it's, it's not boring. I had the same feelings the first time I played. I gave it another real chance, and then it started to grow on me really quickly, and I really like it now. Okay. Yeah. Did you like it because you were winning, Holston? <laughs> no, no, no. That's, that's the thing. The game balances you out, so you don't always win. Ooh. If you're really good, you rank up. And, when, and, when you, and if, you're bad, if you're bad, you rank down, and then you, at some point you reach a level where you're even. Okay. It's like a true rank, isn't it? Yeah. It's um, funny enough, I was reading an old Dreamcast magazine the other day and it had the review of online Tetris in there and they gave it like four out of ten or something. And Ouch. A lot of what they were saying is what you guys have echoed. And I think, um, you know, that there's two ways you look at it's funny, every time a Tetris game gets re-released, it either gets criticized for trying to be too fancy and not stick into the original formula of Tetris, or mm -hmm. it gets criticized for sticking to the original formula of Tetris and not having enough features. Um, I, I'm on the fence with this one. I see both sides. I think, you know, it's Tetris at the end of the day. It's good fun mm -hmm. to it's play. It's fun. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's something different online for Dreamcast. Um, they didn't mess with the formula of Tetris in it um, it's a little bit different from the tetris i played before but once you get, know what you're into it it's actually a really fun game yeah well I'll definitely give it another chance then yeah i think you're you're wrong Lars. basically <laughs> <laughs> so first time i played my matches last like 20 seconds okay this is this is really bad this is lame but once i ranked up a little bit it got much much better so so maybe maybe we rename this instead of the worst online Dreamcast games that can be renamed. Dreamcast games that might be bad, but that deserve another go. <laughs> I, I, I would recommend because... to you to give it another shot. We'll give it a go. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's worth it just looking at dreamcastlive.net now. And um, this one of the screenshots is me beating PC. So ultimately, you know, what more, what more could you need to say about it? It's, <laughs> it's a good game in my books. Um, another one that's interesting is Sega Tetris. And that has online... 
but it's not it's uh, not work in progress. But that's I really really like that game. I've played that offline quite a lot, and I I quite like that one. That's got the monkey on the cover, right? Yeah, I think it wins the prize like for my favorite Dreamcast cover. It looks so cool. Such a cool looking game. I still think Tetris on a Sega console is wrong in in general. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> should be columns online, not Tetris online. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's funny why they didn't why they didn't make any columns games. I think I think we'd best move on uh, from the uh, Dreamcast online game draft. But just to recap what we have here, then, so the four best online Dreamcast games are Quake Three, Maximum Pool, Worms World Party. And Fantasy Star Online. That's a pretty good night of online gaming yeah. right there, isn't it? <laughs> That's pretty solid. Yeah. Sounds I good. Mean, what more do you need? Uh, we have the four most anticipated online Dreamcast games that we are waiting to come back online are Hundred Swords, Neto de Tennis, Quake World, and Out Trigger. Nice. As much of a consensus about those there? I mean, I'd be happy with any of them. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I take anything I can get. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not. That's what it we're not picky. Down to. Toy Racer yeah. Two. We're not. We're, we're not. We're not picky. Not when it comes to anticipating games, but evidently when they land, we we can be a bit more uh, a bit more harsh because we also have four games here that we consider to be amongst the worst. Although with the caveat that they're always worth giving it another go, and those are Ooga Booga, Pod, Toy Racer. And the next Tetris. Um, so there we have it, folks. Uh, a definitive list from our expert panel. But uh, to close out the episode, we are going to put the guests through their paces in a very rigorous quiz. Public shaming ritual as a forfeit if they lose. <laughs> but uh, Lewis held me back on that front. He's he's quite um, risk averse person, which is understandable. So uh, James. Harvey Holston, the format of the quiz is pretty straightforward. I'm going to ask you 10 questions pertaining to the Dreamcast Online. You'll be working as a team, so no competition here. uh, So you can defer amongst yourselves. And come the end of the quiz, the thronging mass of DreamPod listeners are going to expect you to have gotten at least 7 out of 10 of these questions correct. I said it was straightforward, but I've got another couple of things to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> so should you need it, you know, I felt I'd give some mercy here. Should you need it, you can redeem one hint at any point. And you can also have the options for one of the multi multiple answer questions halved. Oh, we've got we've we've got this, guys. We've got this. Just let's we don't need any lifelines, I don't think. <laughs> can we not dial a friend? <laughs> I mean we I was thinking about doing that, but we've shown ourselves to not be that uh, yeah, not that tech savvy when it comes to recording these things. So <laughs> I'm gonna avoid that. I just hope I I just hope I do a lot better on this quiz than you did on my quiz last time out, Loz. So you know you set the bar really low. So, uh, you know, I was just being, you know, I, I, I just thought I didn't want to, to um, make things too hard for everyone else. Really, that's what I was doing because I'm very generous like that. If it helps, I was listening to that. I couldn't get it either. What was the game, James? What was it again? Re- Revolt. Oh, that was it. Yeah, I hit myself uh, when, I, yeah, when yeah. you said that I was listening to it. Yeah, yeah. But it was Mike in with me on that as well. So he takes half the shame. <laughs> oh, and he uh, should have known. <laughs> he should have known. He should have uh, known. Um, okay, so are we happy with the rules? Is it all understood? Mm-hmm. Yep. Sounds yeah? good. Right, so the first question. Driving Strikers, as we've been discussing, that's the first commercial indie release to feature online play. Um, and it's recently been made available for pre-order by Wave Game Studios, who have teased a potential release date for the game. Can you tell me what that date is? It's July 7th, isn't it? I'm pretty sure I remember the tweet with the Sega Rally font on it. Is it 23rd? I have no idea. I've got the 7th in my head. 7th of July, I think it is. What was yours, Holston, the 23rd? Yeah. We're quite far out, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Split the difference. I could be completely wrong. What was the options we've got again, Lars? <laughs> the first hurdle. 
<laughs> the options are the lifelines are you have one hint that you can redeem at any point and you have one um 50 50 for the multiple choice questions what's the hint gonna be it's gonna be july and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> i can't tell you <laughs> I just go with one of your guys' dates. Holston, how how sure are you? Not sure. I'm not sure either, but I'm I, I'm I can remember seeing seventh of July. Let's let's go with yours. If you see, yeah, let's go with yours. Let's go with yours, James. I've just got a vision of it. Okay, seventh of July. Yeah, yeah, you're oh, correct. Come nice. on, yes, yes one man. point in the bank. Okay, uh, question two. Before Driving Strikers, long before Driving Strikers, the last Dreamcast game to feature an online multiplayer mode uh, was released in April 2002. So this is the game currently that is actually the most re- recent game uh, to be released with an online multiplayer mode. And it was released in April 2002. It was a Japan exclusive game. Can you tell me what it was? Mm, exclusive it's going to be what was that fighting game that had the ps2 like compatibility not the matching service was it that i i just think in like of late releases i, I know there was because there was that advert wasn't there with the dreamcast controller and the ps2 controller and it had cross play uh what game was that i don't know i'm sure it was a fighting game of some description so there's a load of fighting games that are called um for matching service but are those the capcom ones i, I, I think it was a capcom one it might not even be that game i'm just thinking ps2 online couldn't have been yeah much before 2002 right yeah so it could be something like street fighter zero three for matching service but i i don't i'm not too good on remembering like the release dates of games there we go but Go with that. Yeah. yeah. J- Japan is not my strong point when it comes to that. Street Fighter Zero Three for matching service? Mm. Wow, wow. <laughs> was it like a no. sports game or something? It was Mobile Suit Gundam Federation versus Zeon the Ets. Oh, oh, no way. Oh. I didn't want to go with that one because I thought yeah, maybe it was too obvious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there we go. These are hard uh, questions. Not so yeah. cocky now, are we, James? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. So, uh, question three uh, Fantasy Star Online was and still is really one of the most popular online Dreamcast games. Um, but can you tell me the year? in which its official PAL and Japanese servers were switched off. Didn't you just... You told us this earlier, didn't you? You were telling us... Well, uh, was it 2006? It's going to be... Is it that late? Well, because Loz was talking about it. He was saying... You're talking you know, just about the Dreamcast one, Loz, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dreamcast only. And, and we're talking only about the PAL and Japanese servers. Oh, I see. I reckon, well, think about it logically. Fancy uh, version two came out in 2000 and was it one or two? 2001 it would have been. So it's got to be at least a year, if not two. I'd say it's either going to be, what do you want? Just a year, Lars? Just just a year. Yeah, we don't need the month. And do remember you've got your lifeline if you need it. I would say 2002 or 2003 is my guess. Yeah, okay, maybe. Well, uh, I'm thinking 2003. Um, Me too. The, the reason I said six was before was because Lars said something about, uh, you were telling your, your origin story of Dreamcast Online, and you said something about the main servers being shut down. <gasps> and I remember being quite surprised and how late it was. Mm, I, I would. I really don't know. I'm only guessing here, thinking that once they brought it out on Xbox and GameCube, they just, then I suppose that wouldn't have been out until, yeah, it would have been 03, wouldn't it? Yeah. I really don't know. I am tempted to go with 2006. Go, go for it. Go right. for it. Because they can keep them up, just not manage them. You know, they can just keep them up. All right, 2006. Very, very close. But no, you're wrong. It was 2007. Oh, Fucking oh, hell. That's what? mad. Wow. Mm-hmm. So I guess they just leave them up. People use them and they just, they, they don't really have anyone maintaining them. It's probably what they did. No, no, no. There was occasional, occasional uh, blips where it would go down and it was for maintenance and then it came back on. Um, but yeah, 2007. Wow. That's really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. It was quite the event when it went down. Hundreds of people all online. Yeah. But um, 
anyway, that's another story for another day. Uh, and another wrong question. And another wrong question. That's right. So, you know, you can only really get one more wrong um, without being shamed. Um, so question four, not all games were quite as successful as Fantasy Star Online. Um, according to Dory Maga magazine in Japan, as of the 31st of August 2001, the online game with the least sales was a game called Net Versus Chess. So Net Versus Chess, according to Dory Maga magazine, unlike PSO, was not popular and it didn't sell very well. Now, this is a multiple choice question and you need to guess how many copies it sold. A is 21,344 copies. <laughs> B is 107 copies. C is 2,578 copies. And D is four. I think it's B or C. I what else was B. Yeah. Was it, uh, what was B? 20, uh, 2,000? B was 107. Oh, okay. Mm, maybe C. That's, that's probably it. You think so? Well, you think about something like Metropolis Street Racer, and that had ridiculously low numbers, like outside of America. I'm pretty sure that sold like single thousands, digits, mm. thousands in Europe and Japan. And that's a big game. So Ooh. I think it could be as low as the hundred and whatever it was. All right. I'm feeling 107 after that. Yeah. Me too. You are correct. Come on. 107 copies. Nice work. According to Dory Maga magazine. So, uh, I mean, I haven't crossed cross check that but um yeah that was a pretty reputable publication and so um there's a gold mine of net versus chess copy somewhere <laughs> there's indiana a, jones there is there's going to be some like packing boxes in there <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. man imagine, it's the new stadium imagine. events cracking into that bad boy <sighs> i've i've already bought them all up and just made that number up for you <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, well done. So you got that correct. So question five, we'll move on to. Um, in January 2000, a TV advert focusing on the Dreamcast's online multiplayer functionality was suspended in the UK, partially because trading standards were unhappy with Sega for being misleading. Uh, can you tell me what the slogan of that advert was? Up to, Up to six, six billion, billion players. players. Correct. There we go. Too easy. I've never even seen a commercial for a Dreamcast. I haven't seen any adverts. I didn't even know the Dreamcast existed back then. It was such a clever slogan as well. It was brilliant. I mean, not that I saw it back then, but in hindsight, it's so fantastic. But Holston, you know when you go on Dreamcast now and it says not quite six billion? Yeah, now I see why. the reference. Yeah. <laughs> Have you never questioned that? <laughs> no. Just, yeah, just, like six billion people on the planet, maybe almost all of them should be playing Dreamcast, which makes sense. Exactly. Yeah, isn't it in the, it's in the intro to the Dream Pod, isn't it? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to check it out, Holston. I mean, you know, Robbie Williams, um, hair barbering, what more do you want? Uh, so, <laughs> so that's three out of five you've got so far. We'll move on to question six. So uh, back when Dreamcast first came online, the internet was a quaint shadow of the monster it has become. And... Um, that led to some some things being quite funny now when you look back on them, considering what's happened since. So I'd like you to tell me which game displays the following message whilst you're dialing up. The message is as follows. When you are online, you'll be playing with people you don't know. So remember to be polite. Choo Choo Rocket. It is Choo Choo Rocket. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. All right. Clearly too easy. Right. So four out of six. So we'll move on to question seven rapidly then. So question seven, there were three games that were cancelled for the Dreamcast, but had playable versions leaked in later years that are all three of them are currently playable online. Um, what are those three cancelled games? DD Planet, Internet Game Pack, and... Uh, PBA Tour Bowling? Yeah. Well done. Shall we put that forward? Yeah, you're certain of that? 
Um, I'm certain. What do yes. you guys think? Def- yeah? Definitely, yeah, DD Planet. Definitely IGP. And uh, I'm not hugely familiar with PB8 or Bolin, but I believe it was unreleased because it's a it's a steaming pile of garbage. It was unreleased. I'm pretty sure. Is it bad? I've never even played it. Like I can't get online. <laughs> is it crap? Yeah, I can't get online either. <laughs> It's probably because because it is a Bethesda game, which meant it never got a day one patch. So it probably that's probably explains why it's so bad online. But eye on the prize, eye on the prize. Did it not get a day one patch because it wasn't ever released? No, that's what I mean. I, I, it didn't huh? release. I, I agree. You're correct again, and yes. I am. Uh, I'm sweating here. I thought I thought these were going to be difficult. I would have wanted to choose it for the worst games, but I, since I've never played it, I can't really say if it's really as bad as I think it is. So everyone I know who's booted that game up, it doesn't work, and they blame the CDI file, which is from Dreamcast um, Online, the, the website. I could only go online with a burnt disc ah. instead of, of putting it on the GDMU. But even That's when I was in a lobby, I have not been able to start a game with someone. I see. That's my problem. I always boot for a GDMU. It's got the worst animation ever seen in a game. <laughs> really? All right, all right. All right, chaps. You, you're making someone very uh, very sad here, Duncan on PBA. We can have a whole episode of Duncan on PBA. We'll line that up. Um, so we're going to move on to question number eight. Um, and we're back to advertising. So uh, in the UK, Sega produced a series of print ads which depicted other European nationalities challenging the reader to play online. Which of the following terms were not used to refer to us Brits? So which of the following terms was not used to refer to British people in these Sega adverts? A, milkskins. B, Britishers. C, tea guzzlers. D, roast beefs. Christ. Surely the milk, milk, ski, milk skins? Oh, it's probably not used. Oh, yeah, but it's a different world back then, isn't it? You couldn't use yeah. that now. <laughs> it's either the first one or the second one, surely. What was the first two again, Luz? Milk skins or Britishers. Should we use our, our 50-50 on this? Yeah, that, I think yeah. we should definitely 50-50 that. You want a 50-50 it? Okay, we're down to C, tea guzzlers, or D, roast beefs. Maybe oh. it's tea guzzlers then, because that almost sounds too... Naff. Yeah, I got a feeling roast beefs is something that they would use back in the day. All right. Tea guzzlers is my choice. Yeah, I'll go with that too. Sounds good. <sighs> Yeah, you found me out. <laughs> <laughs> so they refer so it was roast beefs. Roast yeah, beefs. yeah. I think I I think the French man was, uh, was thinking, taunting yeah. you as roast beefs. The the German man was taunting you, calling you a Britisher, and the Spanish guy was saying that you were going to go the way of the bull, milk skin, or something like that. Uh. Uh, so there we are. Um, so that is seven out of eight. Ego Holston, you can say be on a podcast with a few uh, Britishers when you go back <laughs> today now. <laughs> I'm sure he call, calls us worse things uh, once the mic's off. <laughs> um, so number question number nine. Uh, sadly, as discussed actually earlier, the PAL versions of games like OutTrigger and Unreal Tournament had their online modes cut. However, in PAL territories, we were blessed with three online multiplayer exclusives. What were those three games? Toy Racer, Planet Ring, and Monaco. Monaco, yeah. Oh, nice one. I, I wouldn't have any idea, but I think you guys are right. Crushing this. Eight out of nine. Uh, and you've still got a hint left, but we are. <laughs> You live and you learn. Um, so we'll, 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 we'll do the last question anyway, just for fun. Um, so question number 10. The Dreamcast came with a built-in modem, but later on in its life, a broadband adapter was made available uh, in Japan and then in the US. What did that particular accessory retail for 
in the US. And you've got four options here. Before you say them, Lars, go on. What do we think? Just so we, what's our gut feel of round about what it would be? I have the number one two nine 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 in my head. Yeah, I was thinking about ninety nine dollars. Oh, ninety nine. Broadband okay. adapter. I don't. I think it was like probably like fifty at most. Fifty. Brand new. Okay, ah. let's see what the options are then. I'm pretty. I, I know a guy who imported it extra, so I don't think he paid that much. Okay. Well, maybe even the- less. <laughs> I like that. I like you introducing the uncertainty there, Holston. Thank you. Um, so the answers could be A, ninety nine ninety five, B, twenty four ninety five, C, fifty nine ninety five, or D, one hundred and forty nine ninety nine. I think it's ninety nine. It's either ninety nine or fifty nine. I'm if I mean Holston knows more than me. I was. I I I, I wouldn't say I know, but that's that's what I feel like. Can we have our hint? Oh, yeah, we've got our hint. How are you going to hint us on this one, Lars? Yeah, it's a bit of a tough one. How can I hint you on this one? Um, well, I'll just say it, it, it wasn't uh, B, twenty four ninety five. There you go. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how kind of you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking 59 then. Yeah, me too. All right, I think 99, but because... The majority wants 59. Let's go with that. Uh, once again, you are correct. So, well, oh. that's on you, Holston. Well done. Nice one, boys. <laughs> I really thought it was 100 bucks. I mean, I said 99 before we even heard him, and then Holston talked me down from it. So. <laughs> that's right. That's he drives right. a hard bargain. <laughs> it means that you can now, um, you know, you can now take a look at how much these things are selling for and, and have a little cry. I mean, I could I couldn't imagine it being ninety nine bread new when I got mine for seventy euros in two thousand eleven. Yeah, well, there fair. we go. God, mine was a lot more than that. <laughs> Quite good, good powers of deduction. Good quiz though, Loza. Very good. Very good. Well, that was good. Thank well, you. Well, it was good for you. It was good. Yeah. For you. <laughs> no, there were some t- there were some tough questions in there, especially the Japanese stuff. They're only easy if you know the answers, you know? Well, quite, quite. Yeah, I appreciate you um, Yeah, making me feel better about that. Thanks, James. Um, okay, well, it was a lot of fun. Um, but I think that's quite enough gabbing on from us four. Um, so, so we'll wrap things up. Um, thanks to everyone who tuned in for this episode of The Dream Pod. Uh, be sure to visit our website at thedreamcastjunkyard.co.uk. And if you are feeling generous and, you know, if, if you can afford it, then feel free to, um, you know, maybe send a few quid to us to help cover our running costs um, at buymeacoffee.com forward slash DC Junkyard. Uh, James, where can listeners track you down online if they wish to do so? Uh, you can just find me on Twitter where I speak angrily at the various topics of the world uh, at Agile Harvey. There we are. Okay. And Harvey, how about you? Um, I guess uh, people can look for my music if they want. Just uh, Yeah. Uh, if you go on to Google and type in Pizza Hotline, you'll probably get lots of pizza places. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually where I stole the name from uh, originally, a pizza place. But um, I tell you what, go to YouTube and type in Pizza Hotline. My music will probably come straight up. There we are. Yeah. Level Select album is highly recommended uh, if you can find it. Um Holston, um, I think you're 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 not too keen on socials, are you? But is there anything that you'd like to plug? I'm I'm a, I'm on Discord, Sega Online Discord, playing Dreamcast Online on Thursdays and Fridays. There we go. That's that's perfect. Yeah, I I was going to plug that because it's um you do a great job running that Discord and keeping you know keeping games coming up every week. It's good to have someone organizing things. Um, uh, okay. Oh, well, actually, what, where can you find me? Someone needed to ask that. Where can you find me? No, 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 no we're fine. We're fine. We'll uh, just end, end here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ganged up on, on this episode. <laughs> it, you can, you, you can find me if you search for my name or go on the Dreamcast Junkyard or something, you know. Uh, okay. That's all for us. Uh, all from us for this episode. Uh, keep dreaming and we will see you next time. Yes.
on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Please stop this disc now. 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 now.